for Islamic financing in South Africa. Bank is well positioned for Islamic foreign investors, as witnessed by new foreign entrants in the market and more foreign banks showing further interest, such as Al Baraka, which recently announced they would open in Kenya. Well, joining me right now is the CEO of Gulf Bank, that is Abdallah Abdul Halik, who's just uh, going to be giving us some more insights into this all-important conversation. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you. And uh, picking off from um, what we're seeing uh, in the Kenyan market, the banking system has been facing some turbulence, especially with the interest rate cap. And um, over and above this, we're also seeing interest from foreign players. I don't know, from an Islamic financing standpoint, are we still attracting various uh, interested parties into Kenya? Oh yes, um, as you mentioned, uh, the banks who have expressed interest to come to Kenya uh, come from jurisdictions where interest rates are very low on their own. Uh, in countries where uh, the bank you mentioned, uh, uh, from Bahrain or the Middle East in general, interest rates are still in the range of 3 and 4%. Uh, and banks, they are still uh, make a lot more profit than banks in Kenya. Mm -hmm with them with those lower profits so there are different ways of doing business and not relying you see relying only on interest rate income is a very uh, old method of doing banking all right and uh, speaking about the new entrance into the market um, what do you foresee in the long term first of all the new entrants are welcome i think we need to uh, promote this market uh, in terms of uh, islamic banking and there is space uh, for even uh, maybe a couple more banks, uh, considering the population of Muslims. And beyond that is that Islamic banking is not just for Muslims, it's for everybody. So in terms of the concept itself, I think there is a lot more room for uh, development of Islamic bank. And it's interesting how Kenya is uh, developing to become the hub of Islamic banking in the region. We are way ahead than uh, many countries in our, uh, in the neighboring countries uh, in terms of Islamic banking. We have made huge strides uh, on Islamic banking. We just need a little bit more push uh, to make it uh, even uh, a bigger hub for right. Islamic banking. Let's talk about the current environment, uh, Abdallah. Um, if you had to give us statistics uh, in terms of the gaps that exist in, in relation to Islamic banking, as well as the opportunities that uh, exist in the industry. Let's start with the opportunities. Opportunities are there, many, first of all, to tap this market uh, and the regional countries. And also the international countries. You can imagine uh, if we issue uh, Islamic Sukuks tomorrow uh, to fund uh, for the projects uh, that the, the president has uh, in mind, the big, the, the big four, we can tap a lot of uh, investors out of the Middle East and Asian uh, countries uh, where there is a lot of liquidity uh, looking for proper investments. I think Kenya is still rated very highly in terms of credit, so we should be able to tap into that. What we need, and the maybe uh, slight disadvantages, is that the act has not been amended to fully um, accommodate Islamic banking in Kenya. We do receive approvals on case-by-case -case basis, but if it is formalized so that we are fully incorporated in the cap, in, uh, in the parliament, uh, parliamentary cap, I think it will give us a more level playing field. All right. And uh, let's look at the big picture, Abdallah. Now that uh, the government has the big four agenda, and uh, we also have talks by the National Treasury to float a Sukuk bond, yes. um, how critical will this, in terms, uh, will this be in terms of opening up the industry? As I said, if we issue a Sukuk, I can almost guarantee that it will be oversubscribed within a week. Why do you say so? Because, first of all, Kenya has a very good track record in terms of credit. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, I think there are a lot of investors who wish to come here, but they are only looking for Sharia-compliant uh, investments. And there is so much money out of uh, those regions uh, that would uh, the, the funds and the governments and, and individual investors who would like to participate in that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's, it has huge and great potential, just waiting for the government to open it up. Okay. And uh, as a bank, uh, what will you be angling for in terms of uh, uh, this big cake that is on the table that captures food, that captures health, that captures housing, that also uh, captures uh, infrastructure? Infra 
All sectors are acceptable for investors. I think uh, they are paramount to any economy, to any uh, country. And we will be looking to play a role in terms of bringing in those investors from areas where they would prefer to have Islamic or Sharia compliant investments. Uh, we, we have already received inquiries of how it will work. We are waiting for the blueprint to come out to, to, for the clear guidelines of it. But the, it's already attracting a lot of interest uh, internationally. In, okay. within the Islamic world. All right. And uh, finally, Abdallah, uh, as a bank, uh, what's, what's your growth outlook in terms of uh, the Kenyan space? We've been seeing uh, banks have been downsizing, mm. um, of course, linked to the harsh economic uh, situation. Yes. But uh, what, what do you see in the horizon? You see, when, uh, for example, banks like Gulf African Bank came into this market, there were already 40 other banks operating. So what was the need for another bank? In the so we came here with that uh, niche of Islamic banking because it had never been introduced. Today we have three fully fledged uh, Islamic banks who occupy maybe 2% of this market today. So it, first of all, that tells you the potential that is ahead of us. Mm -hmm. okay, if the three banks uh, only uh, have 2% of the, of, the, of the market share, there's huge potential for that. Out of that 2%, 1% is, is, is taken by Gulf African Bank. Yes. So we see a lot of potential in, in the market for growth. Uh, and we have not even tapped other communities who to tell them that Islamic bank is not just about Muslims, it's not about selling faith, it's not about uh, the Muslim population. It's a concept that people need to understand, accept and appreciate. Right. So the potential is huge. I think there is room for even more banks uh, Islamically and uh, competition is always good for the Monanchi. All right. And uh, of course, uh, I wouldn't close without getting a parting shot from you. Um, how big, opportunity, how big uh, opportunities are there, especially in counties? Counties, they have, you see, counties and the national government will work the same way. Because counties, are, as from what I understand today, are not allowed to borrow their own, they have to go through the national government, which is the right thing to do, because otherwise then the control for national debt will be, uh, you, you know, it will be very difficult to control. Sure. But I know for banks, and I can speak for my bank, we are very, very ready to support county as long as we get the proper approvals from, from the national government. The same earlier, people or investors who have expressed interest to even support county government initiatives, that are aligned to the big four. All right. Mm. Actually, I asked you that question because uh, one of the uh, Twitter poll questions today we're asking, uh, uh, do you think counties will attain fast economic growth by uh, forming the regional blocks? So far, four counties have signed and ratified mm. for them to have an economic block. We are seeing other counties where the president is currently e, um, uh, overseeing an event. Um, I don't know, do you feel these economic blocks will uh, see counties accelerate? Yes, I think uh, it's a good idea, it's a way to go. These counties will complement each other. Each county doesn't have to do the same thing the other county does, so they can agree what you will do. I can tap resources from your side and what you will do, and then it becomes, because there are counties that do not have the resources that are needed. Uh, for example, Mombasa County or Lamu County have, have the sea. Mm. Have they have a resource that other counties may not have? What are, can other counties uh, uh, benefit from, fr from, from the sea in cost? Uh, and vice versa, where counties can grow uh, agricultural products, we do not, we can, in Mombasa, for example, they cannot even grow potatoes. Mm. Okay, where can, so these uh, synergies can be there for counties and